to our webinar series, process mining use cases have been more than halfway through, and today we're back with a very hot topic that I'm sure is valuable to everyone in the business world, process mining for digital transformation. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that during the webinar, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the question box and we'll go through them in the end. We have two webinars left in this series. Please check them out and register on our website. And uh, now I pass it to Temu Lehto, our Vice President in Process Mining at QPR. Hello, Temu. Hello, Yen. Super good to be here. <laughs> so, am I ready? Uh, is it okay I start? Yes, very, very good. Okay, everybody, great to see you here. And uh, let's get into the actual content. Process mining for digital transformation. I'm thrilled to talk about this. And uh, we are going to share some best practices. And we're going to present these kind of a three key themes. Value stream mapping then the agile organization and it's much about the process changes so process changes agility and then the the third bullet the business transparency so that kind of uh, features we will be highlighting and demonstrating from the uh, digital transformation point of view all right qpr one million licenses sold more than two thousand customers more than 50 countries and uh, more than 400 process mining projects delivered and uh, we are very happy to share our experiences of doing process mining in various business processes and industries and uh, with various use cases and today the use case we are talking about is digital transformation how can your digital transformation people in your organization how can they benefit from process mining Okay, so what is the field of digital transformation people in the organizations? Like, what are they thinking and what are the challenges regarding the digital transformation? It would be nice if you send some comments or questions. I could even comment those now in this, this kind of introductory part. But, let's, but of course, let's get back in the, in the later terms or book a one-to-one -one meeting where we can go into more detail. But digital transformation challenges. Well, one of the obvious challenges is the speed of change. Uh, things are happening very, very fast. Things are changing very, very fast. And companies and organizations also need to change very fast. Well, we are right at this moment living inside the coronavirus period where everything changed super suddenly all over the world and all the companies needed to react all the organizations needed to react into these new circumstances this is very typical this is happening all the time now the scale is massive but uh, we have already seen this kind of change happening for the past 10 20 years and the speed of the change has become faster and faster and faster so process mining is one key technology to help you guide your organization in this uh, um, uh, age of, of very very quick fast changes <clears throat> okay the second topic new business models we have seen like some old businesses being totally replaced by the new businesses there used to be film cameras, if anybody remembers. And then we got the digital cameras. And nowadays, you don't really see people carrying the cameras so much in the normal situation because all the cell phones have the cameras. So things are changing from the technology point of view. However, in the business model change, <laughs> there used to be grocery stores and everybody went to their electric uh, shop to buy some televisions and so on and now we have the digital marketing and digital purchasing of the commodity products the the you have a wide selection you can purchase whatever you want from whatever website uh, anywhere in the world 
and everybody kind of currently already accepts that now with the corona the new business model how to buy groceries like normal food items is 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 changing the role of the restaurants and then also the b2b in b2b there used to be certain business models how you have done business in the past now gradually all the changes will come to the business to business world as well uh, humans get used to the way how they interact with companies when they are consumers and now with the business to business they uh, are ready to take similar approach in their business to business like why purchasing should be super difficult why couldn't you just go to the website and make the purchase and uh, why couldn't it be as easy as it is uh, for the uh, uh, consumer market so B2B uh, uh, tendering processes and, and all that stuff is changing. Okay, <clears throat> third bullet, big complexity. Uh, world is becoming a very complex place. Everybody wants to simplify the processes, simplify the approach, make it one size fits all. But the more we simplify, the more there's still the need for special options and people like to have customized products and it's not only the t ford where you can only select the color as long as it's black but you want your car with all those options and special uh, uh, enhancements and all of that customer reaction and uh, the, the the customer power is adding the complexity so in digital transformation we want to manage the complexity so that we can make our own processes efficient and of course make the customer happy and one way to do that is the automation of the end-to-end -end processes it's easy to say but it's much more difficult to do so automating end-to-end -end processes uh, process mining as we demonstrated in our um, robotic process automation webinar is a perfect excellent tool for understanding the end-to-end -end process and giving you the guidance what are the tasks that should be automated next and which are the processes where you can reach full end-to-end -end automation and in the digital age digital era uh, fully digitalized automated processes are eventually the ones that can lead, can have the fastest cycle times and lead times so you may have your b2b customer who expects to get the product next daily delivery or six hour delivery or two hour delivery the 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 pressure for faster lead times is is, is big and uh, the ones who automate the full end-to-end -end process are, are, are in the best position to, to, to provide the fastest lead times and the quickest on-time deliveries. And if you can order from Amazon next day delivery or same day delivery, it will come to the uh, business to business cases as well. So those that is one challenge. And then as the last bullet for the process management people, it used to be 20 years ago the world used to be a very nice place where you can just walk in the shop floor talk with the experts and ask how is our process going on well the more you automate the less you have humans and eventually if you automate zero touch processes where you don't have any human doing any manual steps in the process it's a question where do you go to ask how the process goes if there is no humans working in that particular process anymore so the answer is not you go to talk to the shop floor people the factory employees the correct answer is you do data-driven analysis of how things are going process mining is the data-driven analysis supporting the digital transformation the more you have digital 
the more you have content and data for process mining analysis. The more you can tell about how processes are going. And no matter if you have humans or computers or robots doing the work, there will always be failures and exceptions and things that are not going uh, correct. So doing the analysis and finding the places which are the problems and bottlenecks and challenges is super important in the future as well as it is today. And you can achieve that with the data-driven analysis. Okay, that is the, the setup for the digital transformation. Let's see what we have. Value stream mapping, agile organization and business transparency. We start with the value stream mapping. So the concept and idea of value stream mapping is that you should be understanding and careful about doing things and steps and activities that add value to your customer and you should not do a lot of manual things or expensive things that do not add value to your customer and value stream mapping with process mining is super super simple let me jump to my first demonstration to show you uh, one example and if you are interested in value stream mapping in more more details just contact us and, and we can go more into the area of value stream mapping. But this is a very good starting point for your digital transformation projects to understand how your processes are adding value uh, to, uh, to your customers. So we are over here. I'm running the QPR process analyzer and I have already selected the first um, display to be the value adding events rate. So this is a standard functionality that comes with the tool. Uh, you have the process flow chart part over here. And uh, now we are having the, the total amount of events with the blue scale over here. And now we have this value adding events, value adding rate over here. So we can see that in this business, the value adding rate is somewhere around 20%. And now, since we are talking, uh, dealing with the, with the full data, uh, we can, of course, do some benchmarking and finding out, for example, with the company codes, let's say we take a Germany and uh, we have an updated picture of the value adding rate inside the Germany business. Or let's say Latvia business over here, we see that the value adding rate dropped to 20, but it is now, again, substantially high in 27%. So this is the, the level of performance you can get from the process mining tools and uh, the, the value adding events is, is easily uh, selected from the flow chart, which are the value adding, uh, which, which events you consider value adding in this process. And then, then you get this kind of information uh, very, very, very easy. So we have the underlying process mining chart that is, that is telling you what are the steps in this full end-to-end -end process, which is SAP purchase to pay process in this example model. So uh, value adding events and the other um, value stream mapping analysis is included and uh, available from the process mining uh, product and from QPR process analysis. Okay, let's jump into the, let's move into the, our second topic agile organization so uh, with the digital transfer digital transformation it's crucially important that you understand what is changing around you and then that you can change fast you can change your own operations fast to reflect those changes in the environment you have the a continuous improvement uh, established in your organization continuous improvement mindset and this kind of agile culture of, of being able to react whenever you need to do so. This corona crisis makes it super obvious for everybody that we cannot just plan one year ahead and then just execute that plan. And how do we do? How do we make ourselves to be the winners who can change the fastest? Let me go back to my demo. And uh, 
Here I have the value adding event rate. So let me jump to the second uh, dashboard. Process changes. Uh, process changes for event types. So process changes uh, is 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 an import. I have I have three reports prepared to you from this uh, agility and uh, change management point of view. So process changes is the report that is showing with the green color the old events and blue color the new events. So you specify a point in time when you want to make the comparison. This could be a monthly report or yearly report or daily report, whatever the review period is that you are interested in. And now we are comparing this review period against the past to see where do we have more things going on and where do we have less. For example, in this report, we see that the shopping cart created this activity has been done only 412 times in this review period, whereas 18,000 times in the past. And then the invoice received has been done very often in this review period uh, and uh, compared to how much in the past. So this kind of report gives you the understanding of how your total business volume is gradually moving into the new kind of activities and new kind of business models. So this is the process changes for the event types. What is happening in your organization? And some of the events are coming outside of your organization. Now let's look at inside your organization. What are the process changes inside of the workers who are doing the job? So here we see a report of process change analysis for the resources. So for example, we see that in this, the timeline is still the same, but we see that in this um, uh, review, this, this new period, this RPA 003 user has been doing more events in this new period than in the old period. So we see that this user who we have here as, as, <laughs> as, as a resource, this user has become very active in this review period, whereas this other RPA 000 user has done a lot of things in the past, but not so much over here. So we see the change in the, uh, in the behavior of these users. We can also uh, look at the information from the user role point of view, seeing that the, the batch users uh, uh, are, are kind of having this kind of ratio between the past and the new one, where the RPA is having a bigger bar over here compared to this. And finance compared to RPA is now has now been doing much less than, than previously. So this is the analysis. And we can also, yeah, like check from the automation point of view, uh, we see that, uh, that the amount of this, uh, uh, manual automatic uh, uh, is, is percentually wise in the bot area. It has grown to be the, the fastest. So this kind of analysis you get to analyze the changes in the resources. And all of these analysis with process mining can be uh, fine-tuned with, uh, with the profiling features. Like for example, if you want to see the same information by the vendor, for example, let's say that with this particular vendor, you can see that, okay, RPA 0 <laughs> has done nothing in the new event period, whereas the, the number three has done uh, substantially a lot in this period. So you can see all your business from the point of view, who is doing it, and then uh, or what the resources are, and, uh, and then comparing to the past. <clears throat> this was the process changes for the resources. And Yet another process change report. Believe us, we have a functionality to, to, to give you all the customer custom change reports that you can ever wish. So we have the uh, configuration functionality over here. You can just go, go on here and, and, and select the measures, dimensions, everything that you ever need for those. But we, the, we are now looking at the, the top of the iceberg, the pre-created functionalities. So let's go to the process flow changes. So process flow is uh, 
a transition from one process step to another process step. And here we see the, the kind of the process flows that we have been doing more in the new period or, or less in the new period. Like we see here, this shopping cart approved to purchase order item created. This has happened very little in this new period, but in the past it happened a lot. Whereas this flow invoice payment to invoice due date, this has been happening a lot in this new review period. Well, <clears throat> you can imagine how this would look with your data and prepare the, the correctly the, the sample set of the data that you are looking at this. But uh, this, is, this, this is the kind of reports that you can expect to get from uh, process mining tools and uh, from, from QPR process analyzer already packed, packaged into the, into the product itself. For, for, for making your organization an agile one. <clears throat> and then the, the, the third topic, business transparency. Uh, this is a general topic uh, for, uh, for all, most of the process mining use cases. So for the digital transformation, you want to have the business transparency based on the data, uh, based on the data like not subjective data, but based on the fact, facts and, and the data in the systems. So with this business transparency, we, need, we mean you identify the problems, you find the root causes, you implement the change, like how you want to improve your digital transformation project, what are the changes that you are doing, then monitoring the results and standardizing the solution. And uh, having a very kind of a quick glimpse to these functionalities, uh, let's jump into the product and uh, and uh, go into the, let's say we can just go over here, for example, and uh, we have a process model over here and uh, we have a root cause analysis. And uh, if we, for example, uh, well, as you know, you can increase the level of the detail that you see here in the process, or you can decrease decrease the level. And if you want to analyze anything, let's say that we make a finding that the purchase order is being created in 35% of the cases, when I make this as a root cause criteria, what we see over here in this window is that uh, if your uh, PO type is PO standard, then 47% of the cases uh, are going through this purchase requisition created. Uh, sorry, 67% of the cases uh, where the average is, is 35. So in this PO, first PO type, this is very typical. And these are the areas where you do have the purchase requisitions created. And these are the areas where you do not have them. And the same information for the root cause analysis is also displayed on top of the flow chart. So we can see that if, if you go through the purchase order, purchase requisition created, then it's very likely that you will be having a vendor confirmation for the order acknowledgement and also the purchase requisition price is changing. But if you don't go through this, then the price is not, not changing. But you can see that if you go through this, the alternative option in this process is to go through the shopping cart. So basically this means that in this particular process illustration, you immediately see that, uh, that there, are, there are alternative routes. Either you go through purchase requisition or then you go to the shopping cart created. And these are the, the sort of the explanations for those rules. For example, this particular user X6535, 100% is purchase requisition created. So he or she is, is dealing only with the purchase requisitions, whereas some other user that you may find in this other area uh, would, be, uh, uh, would be doing uh, much less of, of that kind of uh, uh, cases. And of course, we can we can just if if we are in particular interested in the users, then we can just limit our root cause analysis into this uh, purchase order created by user type, and then see this analysis, the root cause analysis 
for all the users where we see that this is these are the heavy users who are creating the purchase requisitions and then these are the users who are practically never creating the purchase requisitions okay so this is this is an example of, of making the process findings and uh, finding the root causes for those process findings and then of course once you make the change you want to monitor your change so for that need we have a wide selection of of uh, uh, of all kind of dashboards and let me show this one dashboard for the conformance checking so the conformance checking is, is a dashboard where you can see uh, how how much um, uh, how big part of your cases are conforming with the uh, uh, with your process uh, design and uh, here we see that the conforming cases we have 43 percent and non-conforming 57 percent and we see the the kind of all this information uh, by the non-conformance reasons reasons and uh, and uh, and by the company codes the conformance rate so these kind of uh, dashboards you can you can build there's a design model that is used in this particular dashboard to uh, uh, to to describe how the process should go and this is now the, the actual ASIS model. And then in my other demo part as well, when I was showing this digital transformation change related to um, uh, views, of course, we may also build a uh, dashboard out of these, uh, these views. So you may have the flowchart over here and then you may have all these um, dashboards for the value stream mapping and the process change analysis for the event types process change analysis for the resources and then this process flow changes so you can easily see the things that you are interested in and uh, and focus on those so giving you the full transparency to how your process is going and uh, ability to see all the information also like a, uh, for any particular uh, area like when you do the digital transformation it may easily be that you for example you start with one of the countries or one of the regions like let's say we start from the from the u.s region so obviously you want to see how things are going in us so you just click there and then of course all the information will then reflect to the situation uh, in in us okay uh, this is this is kind of the business transparency and uh, and uh, i wanted to kind of end my presentation today with the process mining benefits so um so process mining is kind of the guiding light for your digital transformation. It will tell you uh, where should you focus in your digital transformation projects and, and how do you gain the biggest benefits of your uh, resources available for digital transformation. So basically, is it enough to fix issues within individual regions so that you get the overall productivity and efficiency high by fixing the exception areas or the problem areas or is it a kind of a global challenge that your customers everywhere in the world or your business region need for example faster deliveries and you need to work with your core process with the new business models with the new possibilities to 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 provide those faster uh, deliveries and if that's the case you need to design the new process but then implement and pilot maybe with a certain region to see that 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 it really works and uh, um, objectivity so you, we are not asking from people how, how how they feel the process is going instead we use the data to give the facts and then we open the discussion 
bring the facts to the table first and then bring your team of humans into the table to talk about uh, what should be done. Human element is crucially important, but bringing the facts should be done by the computer. And uh, computers, process mining is super good in bringing the facts to the table in the format that can be understood by all the business users. So you don't need to be data scientist to understand process mining results. Process mining is simple to understand facts and then you have the people to think about what should be done next. Okay, uh, some of the um, improvements that, that, that have been able to do uh, with process mining, higher internal efficiency. So you want to be internally more efficient. You want to increase the customer experience, make your customers uh, more happy, and you want to increase your sales revenues. So it then de de it depends on your digital transformation project. What is the goal that you are going after? Are you going to the efficiency world, customer experience world, or the increased sales world? Okay, I think that was one of my parts. Uh, Irene, what do you think? Should we? Should you say something about the? Should you say something about these, or should I start answering the questions? Yeah, maybe you should start with the questions. Okay, all right. Let me just get this here. Okay. Okay, there's a lot of questions. Let me, which looks very, very, very good. Okay. Okay, so. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, uh, there's a, this, this question that understanding the goals of digital transformation is a major challenge. Okay, uh, let's say that uh, process mining is a generic technology and methodology. So with process mining, you understand your own transparency, how your organization is, is, is behaving, and, uh, and you understand the changes that are happening within your processes and outside of your organization, depending on what data you feed into the product. Then understanding the goal of, uh, of, of each organization's own goals for the digital transformation, uh, is, is, is obviously uh, kind of outside the boundaries of, of, of QPR process analyzer of, or outside the boundaries of, of process analyzer, but certainly uh, uh, you can map each of your digital transformation KPI, key performance indicator, you can map that into the real actual data using the QPR process analyzer KPI reporting tools. So you can have a goal for your project, you can set up a target limit for that, and then you can acquire the data from process mining model. So you will have all tools needed to set up your reporting, uh, reporting goals against uh, 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 your actual behavior against your, your goals. And for example, you can have this kind of uh, uh, operational uh, overview reports where you could have like uh, your your selection of of the of of the process KPIs and then you can have them compared to your goals. You can have this kind of ready-made reporting. Okay, then we have a question. Um, in the process flow change analysis, okay, let me go to the process flow change analysis. Okay. Uh -huh. I will pick that up. Process flow changes here. Uh, I showed two period analysis old cases and recent cases. 
is it the comparison of the events with the old flow and the new flow after improvement or is it just a comparison of the current flows in different time frames like flow, du flow duration before and after very good question so let me let me let me say that say that again so all these flow changes all these graphs uh, can be configured in a way that they meet your needs let me show you how this graph has been configured uh, as the default and then 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 then, then we can uh, i can tell you how, how how we can change so what we see here are the flow occurrence count like how many times this particular flow is happening in the new area 4544 occurrences okay so that's the count and then the dimension we have the dimension as the flow path, which you can see here. So this is the path, how it goes to invoice payment to invoice due date. So for each flow path, these are the numbers, how many times it occurs. And then we have an, a second dimension, which I have used a customer expre expression, where it divides all those flow occurrences into old and new ones. And now you can see it over here. So it is just taking the end of the flow and the timestamp and comparing it to 1st of January 2019. If it's newer than that, then it's new events. <coughs> Otherwise, it's old events. So this is now the rule. But of course, this rule can be freely selected, whatever rule you want to be there. Like if the case has a certain case attribute that says that this is done according to the new process or old process, then we can go from the flow to the case and, and pick up that information and have it here. So QPR process analyzer reporting KPI expressions and the whole expression language is, is super powerful and it's capable of, of handling all those uh, situations. And if I show you the, uh, the place for more information, you'll find it over here, process analyzer wiki and Here's the KPI expression language. And with this language, you can easily access all those process mining objects and, uh, and uh, create all those customizations uh, so that the report is telling exactly what you want the report to tell about. Yes, this was the process flow change analysis. And very briefly, I can show that the process changes for the resources, for example, it's very, very similar uh set up and uh, over here we have the measure to be the event count how many times this event is happening and the dimension is the custom expression saying that the timestamp is bigger than this events only have one timestamp flows have two start and end okay uh very good and uh then there is a question of the value stream mapping so uh how do you how do you do that okay i i i will be, I, i'm happy to show that so value stream mapping uh there are very many ways to do it but uh the 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 default way that you can easily do uh with process analyzer is that you go to the okay value adding events so we have it here and again when we open the details we see that we are this time looking at the events over here and the measure is the event count so this is the blue one over here is the event count and then we have the custom expression uh, which says that if the uh, the event count the the event has the event type if it's good received PO item change net price or this invoice block, then it is regarded uh, as this uh, being part of the value adding events rate. So those event types that you consider value adding, you add them to the list, or if you want to follow the non value adding events, you add them to the list, and uh, then you get this, uh, this graph, uh, which is showing how much of that event type is taking place in compared to all the event types 
and this is something that you can also customize this event to be like a, how much of this event type is happening within each case. So you may want to see a figure that on average how many non-value adding events you are doing per each process case. Like you have a customer order, so how many non-value adding events we did for a customer order on average. Or the other way around, how many value adding events we did for the customer order. So that will give you a nice figure that will go that if it's the non-value adding events, you want to uh, uh, improve your business, digital transformation, get rid of the non-value adding events and, uh, and, and reduce that amount. Also, QPR Process Analyzer events have a cost, so you can have the cost or even the benefit. So you can give a cost or a benefit side to each of the event types, and then you can calculate what is the total amount of euros that you have added value, and what is the total amount of non-value adding event euro cost that you can accumulate it within your organization to reach that uh, the, the to complete the process. So you can have a full cost analysis. You can dig, dig you can go deeply into the value adding events and value stream mapping with the data driven approach with QPR process analyzer and have those views and let those views to guide your uh, digital transformation initiative. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let me see. Okay, yes, I think maybe we have used the time. So, Jen, maybe if you want to say something. Yes. Yeah, I will wrap it up. Uh, thank you all for your comments and questions. And we will publish today's webinar recording and presentation slides on QPR blog. And I can also send them to you through email. If you have any questions about this webinar, please contact marketing at qpr.com and if you want to discuss further about your project uh, with an with a process mind expert you can use our form on qpr website you can either request a live demo or a meeting to discuss how to employ, uh, deploy process mining in your organizations um, with all the details related uh, and thank you and see you next week in our webinar thank you very much thanks bye bye